morning. Well, for some of you, I'm sure it's our first time in seeing each other. And uh, so just to say a happy new year to all those of you that I haven't seen before today. A new year is always an opportunity for a fresh start. And uh, it's an opportunity to make some decisions, to make some resolutions of what we are going to be and to do in the new year. And um, so I thought, let me say, first of all, if this is your first time today, thank you for choosing to be here today. We appreciate you coming. And, um, and for, for those of you that come regularly, thank you for coming too. And to those of you that are online, uh, we just are so pleased that you've been able to join with us. It means an awful lot to us. A few New Year's resolutions that we have. One of them is get fit next year. <laughs> or if you're Brian, it's going to be order every drink on the Costa menu. <laughs> or if you're Faith, it's stay in the bathroom while you brush your teeth. <laughs> For some of you, it needs to be stop Googling symptoms. Another one that you might want to do is to follow joggers around in your car, blasting Eye of the Tiger <laughs> to encourage them. Or you could get in a crowded elevator and then say to everybody, I bet you're wondering why I've called this meeting today. Of course, my resolution is to stop lying to myself about making lifestyle changes. Or you might say, I'm going to work out every day, or at least briefly consider it. Well, my resolution for 2022 is to accomplish the goals of 2021, which should have been done in 2020, because I promised them in 2019. <laughs> Many of us fear making resolutions making decisions, making promises, saying what we will do in the year for fear of failure. But life is a journey, and life is intended to be about making progress, not just about motion. And so I want us at this start of this new year to make some decisions that will determine not just this year, but determine our destiny. That will determine who we become, what we will become um, in the next five, ten years, if the Lord should tarry. I believe it's so important to us that we get a focus for this year and a focus for our life, because just like light, when it's focused, it has power. Light that's diffused has very little power. It can light up a place, but it's not powerful. But you focus light, like we did as little boys with a magnifying glass, on some bugs or a piece of grass or on a paper or something, trying to get a fire going. I know you would never do a thing like that. But if you focus it even more into what they call a laser, then it has immense power to even cut through steel and, and other materials. So light, when it's focused, then our lives are exactly the same. When we focus our lives, when we understand what our life's about, when we decide what our life is about, it has the power to change our life for good. And I believe that is so important for us. You see, our lives are meant to be lived with the ultimate focus of one thing. This one thing ought to be our chief aim. This one thing ought to be the very ultimate of our work, of our achievements, of our purpose, of our destiny, the very thing that should be at the very core of us that should trump everything else is worship. Because when we focus on 
him, he brings everything else into a different perspective. We see through different lenses. We see life differently. We see God's perspective. We see who he is, how great and how awesome and mighty and resplendent in glory. How he is able to change any situation. He's able to guide you. He's able to protect you. He's able to do these kind of things. And that is what God wants to do as we begin this year. He wants us to make some decisions. He wants us to go from a dream to destiny. He wants us to have a dream. He wants us to understand the dream that he has for our life. And we have to determine that. He doesn't just come on its own. We've got to look for it. We've got to seek for it. We've got to ask for it. And so this year... My aim for us as a church and for all who call themselves part of destiny is I want us this year to focus on a number of areas. I want us to focus on being healthy, wealthy, godly, and wise. Now, you know, we're always thinking, and some of you are going, well, wealthy, yes, God wants us to be a success. I want to say to you, when he takes a hold of every area of your life, he can change every area of your life. But it doesn't happen automatically. You have to go by the laws and the principles that God has given us. And when you go by the laws and the principles, it makes a difference. You see, it's the law of the path. In other words, if you go on a path and that path leads to Bradford, then whatever you do, it doesn't matter whether you walk or whether you run or whether you ride on a bike. It doesn't matter the, how the journey. It doesn't matter if you detour. That path goes to Bradford. So if you get on another path and that goes to the promised land... Leeds United, if thou... <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. Anyway, uh, you see, we all have sin in our lives, and that just happens to be my... Um, but what I'm saying is, if the path leads to Leeds, and you get on the path to Leeds, it's not going to lead you to Bradford. And that's the same with your finances. You can have, you can say, I want to go to Bradford, but if you're on the path to Leeds, you're never going to get to Bradford. If you're on a path of just spend, 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 you're never going to be able to save and to see yourself out of debt. In other words, everything is a principle and God has put laws in place that if we obey them, if we act on them, if we put them into practice, they will make a change to us. And so this year I want to look at each of these areas. I want us to look at our, our, our physical health, our emotional health, our mental health, our spiritual health, and our financial health. I want to look at these through this year, and that will be in different areas we will do it. And so, with physical health, the first thing that we are going to do at the very beginning of the year, which of course, as you know, we're going to be entering into a week of prayer and fasting, but after our week of prayer and fasting, we are going to go into the Daniel plan. So this week, we're in the Daniel fast and prayer, and then the week after, the next Sunday, we will commence on the Daniel plan. Now we're going to introduce it. We're going to have a teaching series on the Daniel plan, on some of the principles of it. And then we're going to discuss it and see if we can apply it in our small groups. We're going to try to do that. We're going to teach about what is God's plan and what does God say about your body. We're going to look about the principles for lasting change. We're going to look at goal setting and focus. We're going to look at group, the factor of, that, that's important in our lives of having friends, companions, people that we can walk with, the power of community. We're going to look at faith and the power of God in our lives and, and in everything that we do and how we can become who God meant us to be. So we're going to do the teaching, we're going to do our connect groups, but we are going to form a brand new ministry. Did I hear a woo? Oh, well, you, you will go woo if you join it. <laughs> now, this is called the Daniel Plan Ministry. Surprise, surprise. <coughs> and so this is going to be run by a group of people a people who are practicing this Daniel plan, a people who are experienced in the dynamics and the aspects of it. There are people like, for example, like physios and nutritionists and things like that. Um, they are skilled uh, in their areas and they're going to be able to help us 
in what we do. There will be resources, there will be cookbooks, there will be a website, there is journal, there is um, a, a Daniel Plan book that, uh, that, that you can read. There is all sorts of things there, resources that will be available for you. There will be support, there will be a weekly meeting, it will uh, start on Zoom. There will be some opportunities for personal coaching, goal setting, encouragement. There will be teaching on this ministry of teaching of cooking and exercises to do and advice and ideas and all, all the areas the Daniel plan is very different to any other diet because it's not about diet, it's about health. So, in other words, the five S that it's based on is faith, because in other words, that's the why we do what we do. It's because God says he's a plan for our bodies. And if you're not, if you're not healthy, you can't fulfill God's plan for your life. If you're lacking energy and zeal, if you're not, not well, you're not able to give God your best. Is that not right? So God wants us to be healthy. He wants us to be vibrant. He wants us to, to have the right, right diet, but the right exercise. He wants us to have these things. So faith is an important part of that. And so worship will be an, an aspect of this. There will be a spiritual, a scriptural basis for what is done. There will be friends. You will get friends together. You'll do things together. There will be an accountability. There'll be focus. You'll be goals that you'll choose your own goals. And then people will say, how are you doing with your goals? And each week you'll go through that. There will be uh, cooking. There'll be food aspects about health. It's about health. Like I said, it's not about weight loss. It's about fitness. And fitness is about strength. It's about suppleness, it's about stamina, it's about these things, it's not just about having big muscles like me. Okay, forget that one. Now let me ask you a question, get your connect card, wherever it is, your connect card, you can start now with a journey. Cost. Let me ask you a question. How much do you think your health is worth? How much do you think it is worth investing into your health? And how much are you willing to pay in time, in finances, in order to be able to get healthy this year and to start the process? Just, just, just write it down. And the thing, next thing I want you to do, but you might want to wait, and that's fine, because we're going to plug it for the next six, seven, eight weeks at least. But you might want to sign up to it. You might be, you might be one of those that's a pioneer. You might be an entrepreneur. You might be the kind of person who is an initiator, you like to be on board straight away. You see, there are some people who are on board with things straight away. They love it if it's new. There are some people who get on board when they see it's working for those that have initially got on board. Then there's those who get on board because they see the other people that have got on board because of the people who initially got on board. And then last of all, you get the laggards and they're the people who will only get on board if they can't do anything else and they have to get on board. <laughs> okay? And, uh, and so that's the kind of thing. We have every type of person in this room today. And so there are some of you that it wouldn't matter what I say. It wouldn't matter if an angel came down from heaven. You would not sign up to the Daniel plan. And I understand that. It's not a problem. It doesn't affect me in any way. Okay? So this is about you. Your health, your physical health, is the Daniel plan. So I hope you will. I hope you say, sign me up. If you do, then we will, uh, we will get in touch with you with regard to that. So we want 
you to be physically healthy this year. We want you to be emotionally healthy this year. We're going to do courses and some teaching on relationships, on parenting, on family. We're going to do some stuff on identity, knowing your identity and who you are. Because our emotional side comes from a confidence in who we are and what God has called us to be. We'll be looking at our mental health. There will be, we want to make better decisions and so have fewer regrets. We want to look at some of those things. We want to have a better focus. We want to learn. We want to get wisdom. We want to have good habits. We don't want to be addicted to the wrong things. We're going to look at our spiritual health. And obviously this week we look doing a prayer and fasting. We're gonna, we want to spend time in worship. We want to look at that. We want to hear from God this year. I want you to hear from God personally in your connect groups and as a church. We need to hear from God. Amen? So prayer partners will be offered to be opportunities for you. That we want to look at your financial health. There will be things like the CAP course that we run. There will be a stewardship series that we'll look at. Because we want you to be healthy, wealthy, godly and wise in 2022. Amen? That's what I hear. So this week we are going to launch the Daniel Fast. Because we know that we need to put God first in every, every aspect of our life. And so in your connect groups this week, your connect group leader will send you a, a, a form that gives you some basic stuff on fasting. I'm just going to go through some of the bits right now. But, uh, but they will send you this and you can look at it or you can print it out, whatever, whatever you want to do. Your, Connect group leader will do that. If you're not in a connect group and you'd like a copy, then just make a note if you're online to the people who are, are uh, hosting online or go to the connect point um, after the service over there. You see, fasting, and I've heard all sorts of things over the years of people talking about fasting. And they say, I'm going to fast TV. I'm going to fast social media. I'm going to fast the, whatever it is. But that's not biblical fasting. You see, biblical fasting is always about food. It's about shutting your mouth. <laughs> That's the literal aspect of fasting is shut your mouth. So in other words, it's about the food. It's what you're putting into your mouth is fasting. Now, I'm not saying you don't do the other things. For you, it might be important to stop watching so much television so that you can pray. And that might be the thing. You know, social media, cutting off for one week, I'm sure you can do that. Um, and if you struggle with that, just give me your phone and I can delete Facebook and uh, Instagram and all that off for you. No problem. But all I'm saying is, is the difference is it's got to affect our food. The fasting is about the food intake. Now, there are a number of different ways of fasting. And um, there's what we call the Daniel fast. Now, the Daniel fast is one of the easiest fasts to do. Okay, and so we're just advocating that you do an easy fast, okay? And, uh, and so people say to me, oh, I can't fast, I can't fast. I can't even fast for one day. I can't even miss a meal. I think, what a load of, this is a technical term now, codswallop, okay? In other words, it's a load of rubbish. You can, you can fast, you can fast meals. You can fast for many, many days, it's not, it's not, and in fact, if you look on Facebook, I don't know, maybe on yours, but my Facebook, it keeps coming up with this five stroke two. It's intermittent fasting. It's kind of a new thing that's out. And I don't know a lot about it other than I keep seeing it, which basically I think means you fast for five days and eat for two. Nah, yeah, it's the other way, isn't it? But, but, but what I'm saying is that these, these are people that are not Christians that understand the importance of just doing without. There's an important aspect to that, but for, with God, we see that there is biblical power in doing without, not because we're trying to slim, not because we're trying to lose weight, not because we're trying to get healthy, but because we love Jesus, because we want God to know that we mean business that we want God to know that we want to cleanse the flesh, we want to purify our minds, we want to be able to focus so that we can hear God this year. But if you fast without prayer, it's not a fast. Because it's a spiritual activity as a fast. 
So it has to include prayer. It has to be so that you can pray more. It has to be so that you can bring God into that. And so the Daniel fast is very simple. The Daniel fast um, is, uh, says this, it's eat no meat. So in other words, if you go to McDonald's and you ask for a hamburger, you just say, I'll have a hamburger without the burger. <laughs> or you ask for a ham salad and say, just hold the ham. Okay, I can see that's going to be hard work, isn't it, tonight, this morning? Eat no meat, no sweets, and no bread. Woo! That's hard for a Yorkshireman, no bread. Drink water and juice, eat fruits and vegetables. You can have all the vegetables and the fruit in the world, yes? And, uh, and, and it will do you good. Um, you can, the others that you can do is a full fast. A full fast is where you don't have any... Um, Food at all, you just have liquids uh, for however many days you decide. Um, you can do what they call a three-day fast, um, and that's where you just give up a couple of items of food. A partial fast, which is from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m., or from sun up to sundown. Um, and so you can select from that, but we're advocating that you go the Daniel fast, Yes. And um, we would love for you to really take that on board. And so it's important. Start why. Think about why you're going to fast. What's in it? You know, because as a, we want you to do it because you want to do it, as well as because of what it will affect us as a church. You see, when, uh, when we pray, we're not just affecting ourselves. We affect those around us. We affect the community that we're a part of. And so when we fast... It does the same. So why should we fast? Well, if you're in need of healing or a miracle, do you need a touch from God in your life? Is there a dream inside of you that you know that only God can make possible that you need to break through and ask God about? Do you need a fresh encounter from God? Do you desire a deeper, more intimate and powerful relationship with the Lord? Are you ready to have heightened sensitivity to the desires of God? Do you need to break away from bondages, strongholds that are holding you fast? Is there a friend or loved one in your life that needs Jesus? Do you desire to know God's will for your life? Then it's time to fast and pray and to seek his face. I hope this week you will get on board. 7 a.m., and 7 p.m. 7 a.m. for half an hour on Zoom, and 7 p.m. to half seven. It's not a massive amount of time, but it's just to kind of start and end the day as a community that we just connect together. We, we want to be praying more than that, but we just want to be able to, to connect that. And they will be led uh, each day by one of the leadership uh, team. So I want us to really to grab a hold of that if you could. You see, because prayer is so essential to us in our life. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30 said this, I, talking about God, God says, I looked in vain for anyone who would build again the wall of righteousness that guards the land, who could stand in the gap, but I found no one. You see, the effectiveness of your public life is determined by your private life. Your spiritual authority publicly is affected by your spiritual power in the private zone. So in other words, it's what God does with you in the private place, in the secret place, that makes a difference in the public sphere. It's what you pray for and do in, the, in your prayer time and as Matthew 6 says, you know, there's when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. And when he sees what you do in secret, he will reward you. In other words, the rewards from doing that which is secret. So my question is, is what's your secret life like? What's your private life like? What, what, what is that like? You see, because we need to make prayer a first priority. 
Winners make prayer a first priority. Losers make prayer a last priority. Believers make prayer a first priority. Unbelievers make prayer a last priority. It's when all else has failed, I think, well, we'll give it a go. You see, a believer does more than pray, but he doesn't do anything else until he's prayed. We need to birth our lives in prayer. Let's not be too busy to not pray. Let's not be too busy that we have not got time to seek God. Let's get up early to spend time with him. Let's take some time at lunch. Instead of going for your lunch, go and spend and have a prayer walk and talk to Jesus. I want to say to you, it will revolutionize your life if you will do that. You see, Nehemiah was a man of action. He was a motivator. He was an organizer. He was like the prime minister uh, to the king. He was like the bodyguard to the king. He had a high position. And yet when he heard the problems of his homeland in Jerusalem and the walls being broken down, he mourned, but he prayed and he fasted. He went to God and for four months he sought God's will and desire and said, God, I need you to do something about that problem in Jerusalem and over time God said to him that's great Nehemiah I'm glad you asked because you're the man so when you pray God for problems you will find that God so often will say now I want you to solve that problem I've given you the gifts I've given you the power I've given you the resources they're there now Nehemiah didn't have all the resources he had a position he had a job but he didn't have the resources, he didn't have the finances, he didn't have the materials, uh, he didn't have the, 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 the authority back in Jerusalem. Uh, he didn't have any of that. But what he did have, he prayed about and said, God, today when I talk to the king, give me success. I want to say to you, it's good to pray for God to give you success. What's the alternative? A failure? God doesn't want us to be failures. He wants us to be a success. And so he prayed. And then the king provided for him. And then he went with certain resources and he went with letters so that he could have permission to do it. And of course, we know as you read, if you've read Nehemiah, and all, go home and read Nehemiah. I want to say to you, he has problems. He has difficulties. He has issues. But it's a phenomenal book in leadership. It's a phenomenal book in how to go about doing what God has called you to do and what you will, what you will face and the things that tackle it's absolutely amazing so get a hold of it and realize that just as Nehemiah although he had a great position and he was like the prime minister thing he didn't try to work it out his way he just obviously thought about it he'd got some steps to do but he more than anything else he came and brought it to God in prayer you see Nehemiah prayed and if you go through it there's about nine prayers in Nehemiah what he does. So, for example, after receiving the bad news about the state of Jerusalem, he prayed about it. During his conversation with the king, he prays and says, God, help me uh, with, with this. After being taunted and ridiculed by Tobiah and Sambalat, he prayed about it. He expressed his anger to God, but Nehemiah didn't take matters into his own hands. He prayed about it. After threats by, uh, of attacks by enemies, he said, we are in your hands, God. We'll keep our weapons handy in case you want to use them. This wasn't we're ready to fight. It was, Lord, we're ready and we've got this, but Lord, do you want us to use them? Constantly in Nehemiah, responding to threats, he said, oh, Lord, God, please strengthen me. Yes, um, in uh, chapter 13, 29, he's reflecting on the action of the enemies. He said, I asked God to deal with the enemies and their evil plans. And reflecting on his own efforts to serve God, he said this, remember me, oh God. He was a man of prayer. And that's what he did. He just kept praying. So I believe that we should pray and fast for the simple reason it shows that we are depending on God. 
It's one of its primary things is to say, God, I, I know that my dependency, my sustenance, my food, my provisions, my life, it comes from you. You are my energy. You are my breath. You are my everything. John 15, 1 to 8 says this, apart from me, you can do nothing. If you want to bear fruit this year, if you want to have a successful year this year, you need to pray. You need to abide in the vine. You need to spend time in his presence, seeking his face. Not only that, prayer lightens the load for you. And, um, Isaiah 40 says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as eagles on, on the wings of eagles. And uh, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. I want to say to you, whatever problems you face in this, as you enter into 2022, is to remember that God will always, uh, it should be the first place you go, but he wants to lighten the Lord. Because when you take your problem to God, it becomes his problem. But the problem is, is we try to deal with our problems saying, God, I serve you. I belong to you. I'm here for you. Everything I have is yours. Lord, I'm praying for your guidance. I'm praying for your wisdom. I'm praying for your provision. I'm praying for your protection. I'm praying for whatever it might be. And thirdly, when we pray and fast, it releases God's power. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3 says this, Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you know not. Prayer can do what God can do. Prayer can do anything that God can do. When we pray, we bring the awesome power, the supernatural power of God into the situation. And oh, by, by gum, do we need the supernatural power of the living God in our lives, in our families, in our connect groups, in this church, in this community, and in this nation. We need Him. Let's bring God's resources, God's power, God's presence so, so that his purpose is accomplished amongst us. We need to pray. And this week I want us to pray. I want us to pray a number of types of prayer. I want us to pray, first of all, aware of the greatness of God. Aware of how good and how awesome he is. This is what Nehemiah did when he said in verses 5 and 6 of the first chapter, he says, you're great. He says, you're awesome. He says, you keep your promises. And that's what, what, what Nehemiah saw. He, he was praying from God's position and God's power and God's provision and God's promises of his covenant. We need to confess the sin in our lives. You know, for all of us, we have areas that we don't want anybody else to know about. But you know what, God, we can bring it to God and God will forgive. He says he will cast it as far away as the east is from the west. He will, he will bury it in the deepest of seas, never to be. I want to say to you, if you sin against me, I might remember it for a long time and I might keep bringing it up, you know. But God doesn't. And he's the only one that matters. So we need to confess our sins. Confess the sins of our nation. Confess the sins uh, that we have as, uh, even as a church. Anything that you see, we need to confess. We need to come holy to a righteous God. You see, we so often are happy to pass the blame. But Nehemiah didn't pass the blame, even though the problem wasn't his fault. But he said, it is my fault. He it says, it's my fault, it's my father's fault, and it's, uh, and it's our nation's fault. We need to be willing to accept the blame. Because if you don't accept the blame, you are what is, if you separate the B from the rest of the word, you will be lame. Don't be lame this year, but accept the blame and claim the promises of God. As Tracy was saying this morning, there are so many promises in the Word of God. Let's pray this week the promises that God has placed over our lives. 
the promises that God has placed over us as a church, that God is very, get some promises. If you think, oh, God's not promised me anything, I tell you, then you're not reading the Word of God. It's living, it's breathing, it's active, it penetrates to the very dividing of soul and, and body. It, it actually gets to the very intents and attitudes of our heart. Let's get the Scripture into our life because I believe when we pray about uh, in light of who God is, and of who we are and what God has promised and willing to make a commitment to do whatever is necessary. If this week you will get on board, I tell you it will set you up for this year like nothing else ever could because we need to become all that God wants us to become. I believe God has got some great things in plan for us. He's got miracles. He's got supernatural. God is not just in the natural. He's super. He's supernatural. And this year we need to raise our eyes and to see God, to see who He is and have a greater perspective, a greater sense of the all awesomeness and the, the wonderful side of God that He created us. He made us. He fashioned you. He wanted you the way you are and He wants you to become all that He can be. I want to say to you more than anything else, this year, will you go from dream to destiny? Will you decide to follow of the destiny that God has for you because if you will you'll never be the same and I want to say to you God has got plans for us in this church greater than we've ever done he's got promises for us as a church and we've not seen them happen but that just the delay does not mean denial he means God is setting us up he's preparing us he's working on us and just like a child when we go into a store when I wish to go into a store with my daughters and we go around Toys R Us. The girls would go when they were little, they would say, can I have that, Dad? Can I have that, Dad? Can I have that, Dad? They want all sorts of things. And of course, I would just say no. But you see, I keep saying no because if they really wanted it, they would harp on about it. I want to say to you, God, like our Father is saying, if you really want it, show me. And this year, this week, sets us up for this year to say, Lord, I'm pushing in, I'm holding out. I'm going to grab hold of everything that you have. You see, I believe that God has storehouses in heaven. And on every, every item that's in heaven, as it were, there's your name. There's your name on items in heaven. And what I don't want to do is to get to heaven and to see things that God wanted me to have that I never asked for. Let's not, if we shut our mouth, God shuts his storehouse. And God is looking for us to open and to ask. He says, you have not because you ask not. If you ask, he will give and he will provide. That's the dream for this year and for our lives to accomplish the destiny that God has for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.